early 1800s, 1850, 1860, Nimrod, 1860. Transits. Built 1843, West. 1860, one of the finest paddle teams ever built by Ebenezer Pike. Yep. Okay, let's go for it. The Pembrokeshire coast has seen countless shipwrecks in the last 400 years, but not all the wrecks are underwater. These are the remains of three tugs that came ashore here in 1983. One man who has devoted his life to the research and location of shipwrecks is Jim Phillips. Working from historical documents and old newspaper reports, he has managed to establish the existence of some 2,000 shipwrecks off the Pembrokeshire coast alone, some dating back to the early 17th century. Jim's close associate and diving companion is Greg Evans, and today's objective is to locate and dive the remains of an 18th century trading ship called the Frederick. Wrecked close to the cliffs near St. David's Head, the Frederick was bound for West Africa when she fell victim to fierce storms and was lost with all hands. Although there is no discernible wreckage left of the ship itself, many interesting artifacts are still to be found.
This is Ramsey Sound. Even on a calm day, it's still possible to see why the notorious stretch of water has earned itself the reputation as a ship's graveyard. On a spring tide, the sea races through the narrow passage at anything up to six knots, the uneven underwater terrain causing whirlpools and overfalls. Many brave mariners met with an untimely end in this boiling seawater cauldron. to the north and we're going south. Now we're going around. Now we're spinning around. Look at the bubbles, must be divers down there. And it's supposed to be quite away from the We've arrived at the Smalls Light down. 20 miles off the Welsh coast. As you can see, the lighthouse is starting to disappear. The fog is coming down from the north, and the rocks can be treacherous, even in today's modern shipping. The lighthouse is disappearing on the top side, and uh, in another about 20 minutes, it's completely gone. The lighthouse has got some very uh, interesting history. In 1800, one of the lighthouse men died and in them days they used to have two men aboard the lighthouse. The lighthouse was a wooden building, not the stone one we have today. But anyway, in 1800, one of the lighthouse men died of natural causes. So the other lighthouse man frightened that if the, uh, once the authorities arrived, believing that they might have him up for murder, he kept the dead man. And what he did with him, he put him outside the lighthouse on a wooden board. So the wooden board was up like that, and the lighthouse man was, the dead one, was tied to it. Well, for three months the storms raged in 1800, and they couldn't get the supplies to them. But every day the supply ship came out, there was this lighthouse man standing there. And the supply ship was, was quite uh, astounded to see the man standing there in all weather. When they did finally land, three months, then uh, they found that it was the dead house, the, the dead lighthouse man. And the other chap, is, um, his health had broken through the incident. So that all happened on the Smalls Light. Because of the remoteness of the Smalls, the numbers of divers that have visited the site in recent years has been minimal. Consequently, the opportunity to locate and dive on the many wrecks has been limited. However, with more clubs and individuals acquiring rigid hull inflatables and deck navigators, the Smalls are beginning to become more accessible.
There is no accurate record as to the number of wrecks on the smalls, but diving here suggests there were considerable numbers during the Age of Steam. It is difficult to identify a particular vessel with any certainty, as wreckage from many different ships can be found at any one location. This boiler is one of four originating from different wrecks which were located on a single dive. Many thousands of shipwrecks around the British Isles, a substantial number are recorded as lost without trace. For divers like Jim Phillips and the members of the Maritime Archaeology Group, much of the thrill of sport diving is enhanced by identifying some of these vessels. Careful examination of the wreck sites for vital clues and research of records at the Maritime Museum may provide them with a chance to write another chapter in the story of shipwrecks. Well, that looks like it's going to be a really, really interesting series. Uh, I often wonder what the, the actors in that, uh, what goes through their minds when they see themselves on television afterwards. And we did an interesting thing the other day. We, we took the cameras out to see if we could find uh, Jim Phillips, who played the lead in, in the first part of the series that you just saw there, uh, to find out what his comments uh, would be on it. And uh, we'll play you the film now. It is quite interesting to see Jim's reactions to being interviewed after seeing the film himself. Uh, we'll have a look at the monitor now and see. Mr. Phillips, excuse me, Mr. Phillips. Hello, Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips, hello. I wonder if we could just talk to you for a few moments, please. Hello, Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips, could we speak to you, please? Hello. Well, we were unable to get Jim to say much to us uh, that particular day, uh, which is very unusual for Jim. Uh, 